What's going on, everybody? Hope you're all having an amazing day. Today, we are going to be talking about Aston Villa's upcoming clash today when you're watching this video against Manchester City in the Premier League away from home. Finally playing a fixture that was scheduled happened to be our first fixture away from home. If we would have played that first fixture, who knows where the season would have gone. I'm happy how it is right now, except for the uh, little COVID outbreak we had at the club, of course. But I'm happy we're going to be playing again. I'm so excited to see our boys out on the pitch again. We're going to be review reviewing all the stats, all the tactics, how we could upset this Manchester City team and end their winning run. Considering that we have, we, have, we have only had three days of training preparing for this game, and obviously we don't know which players have tested positive, and if they're going to be fit, who's going to be fit. We only know one player who's tested positive confirmed, and that is Trezeguet. Unfortunately, he's put it on his social media accounts that he tested positive, but he's back at the training ground. And all of the players who have tested positive are back at the training ground, but again, they're being assessed by the performance team, their performance levels, and their fitness, of course, because it is a respiratory illness. You don't know if they're going to be fit for however long. I mean, we had as we can't so just get a normal illness and he was out for like two three weeks so we're gonna have to see but today we're going to be reviewing all the tactics how it could upset this manchester city team and ultimately how villa could do well and succeed and get a good result away from home one of the most difficult tests a team like us can face a trip to the etihad stadium so I did touch on the COVID situa situation a little bit, but the good news is that we have confirmed that Jack Grealish, Russ Barkley, Douglas Luiz, Emmy Martinez, and John McGinn are all negative. Those are the players that we know for sure are negative. One show on the likes of Ollie Watkins, Ezri Consa, Tyrell Mings, Matty Cash, Matt Target, I think will probably be good. They'll probably all be good, but it's probably some back. We obviously have five vacuum staff and nine first team players that tested positive. Like I said, the players that were positive have come back to the training ground and they're training, and they're constantly being assessed by our performance team in the three days we've been back. But we don't know. We'll see when the lineups come out. It's very hard to predict what team Dean Smith will put out there with what he's got and the performance levels he's getting from his players. But only Dino knows what he's going to put out there tonight. And Man City have played two days ago, and Dean Smith said in one of his interviews that it was like a winter break for some of his players, that they were doing whatever they can, you know, training in their garden, they're training in their flat, whatever they can do. But it's also a winter break. They get to rest, relax their muscles. And Man City played two days ago against Crystal Palace, and it's likely to probably be the same starting eleven. And now I'm going to touch on the very big battle that Aston Villa have to win in order to have some sort of fighting chance at getting a result at the Etihad Stadium today. Right now, Man City's midfield is one of the best in the world, mainly due to one man. I think we all know who it is. It is Kevin De Bruyne. He is completely legit, probably the best midfielder in the world at the moment. He's just different UAV. He's got .67 average goal, average assist per game, and he takes he gets one goal contribution every something like 100 minutes from a central midfield role. He's been playing more as an eight for Man City this season in Pep Guardiola's system. But we've also got to consider the fact that Rodri is a very good holding midfielder and does his job very well, kind of like their Douglas Luiz but Spanish and a bit of a bigger name. I don't know if that's the best way to describe it. But anyway, and the likes of John McGinn and Douglas Pease are going to have to have big games. And we can't forget that Ilkay Gundogan has got four goals in his last six games. He's a danger man right now for them. Probably their top scorer in their past six games. And now they are missing Americ Laporte and Sergio Aguero through injury and COVID for Sergio Aguero. Unfortunately, get well soon, Sergio. But of course, they've been doing what they've been doing recently without them. Laporte's been injured. And Aguero, he's played five games all season, zero goal, zero assist. And John Stones has looked like the reincarnation of Paolo Maldini for Man City this season. It's a little bit ridiculous how that guy's turn of form is just blatantly defies all laws of physics at this point. We do have to win this midfield battle because if the Jesus, if the Jesus is the Mares, is the Bernardo Silvas, the Sterlings don't get the service. They can't score goals. That's how, that's how the game works. Because I'm very confident in our defense's ability to keep a clean sheet here. But it's they're probably going to score goals. Something's going to go wrong. They're probably going to score. They haven't been scoring many recently, to be fair. But the problem we have to worry about is do, can we score a goal on this very robust, tough to break down Man City defense? And when you think about Man City in recent years, their weakness, it's always been their defense. Not this season. They've been bagging out 1 nils, 2 nils, 4 nils two days ago. But the likes of Ruben Diaz and John Stones have been absolutely revolutionary. Even Zinchenko has been alright. Jao Cancheo, Matt Kyle Walker have all been brilliant this season. It's going to be very difficult to break down this team. But we can utilize, like Southampton's Ralph Hasenhutl said last season, they, util they utilized Edison's positioning to their own advantage and took long shots like that Che Adams goal, the 1-0 win for Southampton t towards the tail end of last season. If we can utilize Edison's positioning to catch them, catch them off guard on the counterattack, let them do what they want, but still play our way and keep the ball, pass the ball around the back, shift the point of attack, tire this Manchester City team out, ultimately we're going to have less of the ball. 
That's just how it is. You're not going to go to the Etihad Stadium and control the tempo of the game. You're not. But if we can hit him on the counterattack and utilize Edison's high, high, high approaching play, then we can maybe get a goal off a scabby goal, a long shot from the likes of Jack Grealish or something, or a quick counterattack. And ultimately, I don't care how they go in, I just care that they go in. And if we can get a result, it will be absolutely revolutionary for this Aston Villa side, considering the tough circumstances we've had to go through recently. Three days of warm-up, fielding a youth team against Liverpool, obviously the COVID outbreak, all the tough times that we've endured recently. If we can go out there and get a result at a very difficult place to go, the Etihad Stadium, they've been very good at home this season, and a flying Manchester City side, then it shows that we, we really do mean business in this Premier League. We can easily finish in the top seven this year. We've just got to show it, and today is the day we do it. We go to the Etihad Stadium, and we put a great performance in. We make a good account of ourselves after ha- only having three days of training, and we move on to Newcastle, hopefully get three points there. We'll do a preview there as well. But that's the plan. I mean, I don't know if it's going to work because I'm recording this before the game. Some of you guys might be watching this after the game. I just don't know. But I do hope that we can get a result here. I, I, I can see it happening, but I can also see us losing this game due to lack of fitness. You know, we haven't played in a while. But that also means that our players are fresh. Our players are excited to play. Dean Smith has always said this about his players. He's got players that want to play the game of football, which is brilliant to have at your club. So they're going to be raring to play. They're going to be raring to go. And I think we'll definitely start well, but it's if we can maintain that throughout the 90 minutes because Man City are a team that's going to tire us out. We're going to have to chase. And because there's a respiratory illness and we haven't trained in so long, you never know. But we're confident in our performance levels from our boards. Dean Smith is confident in his performance team's assessment of our players. Now I'm going to move on to the predicted lineup, which is very hard to predict considering we don't know which players are quite tested positive yet. We do know what some players that haven't tested that haven't tested positive have tested negative. But I'm just going to try and predict the lineup. I could be wrong, but I think I've got the general consensus of what Dean's going to do down. Now, I'm playing with this one, but I've gone for the same lineup as last time out against Manchester United. Emmy Martinez, we know, is finding goal. Our back line, we haven't heard anything. I think Tywin Mings would have announced it if he had got it, so I think he's a definite. He believe, he'll be alongside Ezri Concha in our ideal circumstances, of course. Ezri Concha has just come off an illness as well, so I don't know why. I just, do you get illnesses consecutively? I don't know. I've, I don't see that happening very often. It's a long shot, but hopefully as we conscious fit, really sweating on the fitness of them two. Matty Cash and Matt Target, I again think Matty Cash at least would have announced. Let me move the camera back down real quick. But Matt Target, he doesn't post much on social media. I think they would have announced it, though, if they would have got it. They seem like the type of boys to do that. Now, McGinn and Douglas Louise, we know are fine. They're, they're going to do their job very well. They're going to be the double pivot, especially considering Man City's attacking outlets. Kevin De Bruyne, Ilkay Gundogan, Raheem Sterling. We had Malvez, Bernardo Silva, all going to be trying to cut down the middle at some point in this game. They're going to have to have some big games to shut down the onslaught of Man City attackers in this one. And I've gone with Grealish, Algarzi, and Traore. Really sweating on the, um, that Boach and Traore didn't get it, and Anwar Algarzi, because we don't know about them two. Again, they don't have social media accounts because, unfortunately, Anwar Algarzi had to delete his due to the hate he got. That's so disgraceful to see that in our fan base after the uh, Stoke defeat. But... That's just that's a minority, and it's disgusting. It's that in a Villa fan base, but we've been showing him love and support, and hopefully he's been confident recently, so hopefully he realizes the love that we're giving him and all the support and the faith we have in Anwar El Ghazi. But Bolton Traore doesn't have a Twitter account, so we just don't know. And then Ollie Watkins, of course, doesn't have any social media accounts either up top. But I've gone with him because Dean Smith, even if he even if he is one of the players that's come back, Ollie Watkins has been known to work, work his hardest, and he's been a very fit player. So even if he was one of the players that was positive, I think he will start today's match. And that's how I think we're going to line up against Manchester City. Like I said, if we go to the Etihad Stadium and make a good account of ourselves, it will be a statement of intent to the rest of this league that... We may have been traumatized by COVID-19. We may have not been able to train for two weeks, but we're still going to go out there and get a result against the title challengers, Manchester City. And I think Dino is going to put out a strong squad. Like I said, I think we're going to start very well, maybe even get a goal early on. But are we going to be able to hold it through the 90 minutes after not being able to train? I just don't know. Well, hopefully you guys know after this point, if you're watching this after the game or if you're watching this just before kickoff, hope you're all enjoying the game. Hope you all enjoyed the game. I could look like a white mug right now and just have, we could have just been mugged off 3-0 and I look I looked stupid, but I've got belief in the boys. I'm an optimistic fan. Let's go get them up the villa. And remember, make, make sure to like and subscribe as well. Make sure make sure to subscribe. Over 89% of you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, so make sure to change that and like the video if you enjoyed it as well. Let's go, boys. Up the villa. Hopefully we can get a result. See you guys next time. Peace.